Hey guys and welcome to Bevan's Builds and today as always I am out in my Lego barn doing some projects and uh, I got all the rough and electrical in which I still do plan on making a video on how to do the sub panel because I still have yet to find anybody that did a sub panel correctly uh, so I do want to make an in-depth video about that but anyway what I'm doing is I got a load of insulation here today and what I'm trying to do because it's getting cold here is get my heater going so I thought I would make a quick video on how I'm troubleshooting this heater, which is a Remington 100, to show you if you have one at home, on how to fix yours. Now the first thing I want to point out with this particular heater uh, is you have eight screws, four on each side, to take this top housing off. And then this housing just slides right off. It's one of the first things I always check when I am working, when I have a problem with a portable heater anyway. Uh, one of the first things I want to check is to see if my glow plug actually has any fire to it. And I'm going to show you how you do that. Mind you, again, I, I, I just, or I shouldn't say again because I haven't said it yet, but mind you, the first thing I do want to say is if you do not feel uh, mechanically inclined to be able to work on these, I don't recommend doing any of this. Uh, I've worked on this before and I'm very comfortable with it. And not only that, I work with electricity all the time, so none of this kind of stuff really bothers me to work on. But um, typically what I do is I take off the lid and then I'll glance in this little hole here and I'll show you how you can see that your glow plug is firing. What I've actually found is that the uh, lines here are not giving me any fuel. Uh, so that is my actual problem, but I still want to show you how you can check your glow plug. Anyway, hopefully you could see that that was firing in there uh, and I turned power back off on it. So. Like I said, again, the problem that I'm seeing is that I'm not getting any flow through this. What happens is you have a little pump in here, and I'm gonna take this apart and show you, that as the fan is turning, there's like a little vacuum, for lack of a better term, or a pump that's inside the back of this fan motor here. And then what that's supposed to do is push the air through to give them a suction to where it'll suck up the fuel, the kerosene, in this particular line here. And that's not what's happening. So. First thing I'm going to do, I already pulled the line out. The lines aren't plugged. I checked them. You can look through them and they're nice and clear. So now I'm going to take off this back cover here and start looking on to see what the problem is with that. Sorry if the light is not the best in the world, but the first thing I want to show you that I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these four screws here to take this cap off. Okay, now that we have all four of those screws out, this should pop off fairly easy and it does as you can see here take that and set it down this is a little filter so that's something you do want to check and it looks to be nice and clean let me try and pop that slowly off we don't want to tear it this is a pain in the butt doing it single-handedly there we go we'll set that down there it's a little cork as you can see it is a little dirty in here so what we're gonna first try and do is we're gonna try and clean this up and see if that'll help us with our flow at all. Okay, cleaning that did not help at all, but I want to show you the problem that I found. This is the actual pump that's on the inside of your... Let's try and get that focused in a little better. This is what the actual pump looks like on the inside of your uh, heater. And what has happened is mine has split in half. But what's supposed to happen is you have these little blades and they're supposed to slide in and out and up and down. Uh, I'm going to have to go see if I can buy one of these. If not, I might end up having to buy a new unit, but I'm pretty sure I can buy these. And uh, anyway, this is the problem with this and why the pump isn't working, is the actual pump itself is broke. Really quickly, I just wanted to kind of show you what that's supposed to look like when it's not snapped. And what happens is you've got these little discs that are supposed to slide in and out of here as this spins using centrifugal force and that is actually how this pump actually works but like i said unfortunately mine is snapped in half so it is not going to be working so uh, now i am off to the hardware to see if i can find a replacement okay when i had stopped recording this is what i had found was bad and broken uh, and i just got this in the mail today this is the new replacement so we are going to attempt to be installing this today. Uh, something I want to point out when you are doing this on your uh, electric heater, 
do not spray any lubricants, do not spray any oils or anything like that in there. It's, if you're going to do anything, you have to use dry graphite. Uh, dry graphite is the only lubricant that you can use inside of this thing. Anything else will damage it because uh, you want it to stay nice and dry. And this is a carbon fiber uh, insert here. Now the trick with this is going to be sliding it in with keeping those tabs out. And I just lost one. So let's see if I can get it on first. And again, I will be putting a uh, link in the description of this video below if you need to buy your own. And again, one more time, like I said, I, you don't want to lubricate this. You'd only want to use dry graphite if you're going to do anything at all. Now, hopefully you can see this on here. I'm going to slowly spin it. And as this spins, these arms is what we're going to call them, uh, will slowly fall out. And that is what actually pump, what, it, what this is actually doing, it's an air pump. <clears throat> this pumps air into the line, pumps it down into here, which forces it up through the hose and then forces it out the uh, front with the kerosene. But anyway, now that we have that on, all we're going to do, I'm going to take and really quickly wipe the back side of this off. Again, I don't want to use any cleansers or cleaners because it will cause problems with your operation and your arms will not slide up and out. We're going to take this and put this back up here. And then you simply, what we're going to do is we're going to take, so we had six, and I'm using there there, six screws. You want to try and line one up. And you don't want to tighten them until you get them all started. It's very important because if you start tightening one, you're going to end up messing up your alignment. You want to get them all started first. So that way you can wiggle it around and get them going. And once you get them all started, then you can snug them down if you like. Uh, I don't like to make my videos real long, so I'm going to go ahead and finish putting these six bolts in, and then I'll start back up. Okay, now that I got them all started, I just want to quickly make sure that still spins freely, and it does. And now I'm going to start snugging them all in. And what I always like to do when I do snug them in is start at the center. This one's a little tight. Then go cross, cross, cross. Cross. And again, make sure it spins freely. And it is spinning freely. Do one more quick. You don't want to over torque it. And I have a bad habit of breaking things. So <laughs> I do always have to watch my own strength. Because uh, you don't want to snap those bolts off. <clears throat> now that you got that up there, I'm going to take a rag. Just real quickly wipe some of this dust out. What a lot of this dust actually is, is the carbon fiber and the graphite. Uh, it's also dirty air and whatnot that gets in it. No big deal. Again, just lightly clean it. Should just pretty easily wipe off. And we're going to take and put the outer cover back on. Line it up. And once again, just like before, start all four screws. One, two, three, four. And uh, just like this, I know this is a Remington 100, but honestly, I've taken about three of these apart. Uh, <laughs> they are all the same. They all have the, the six screws that hold the center housing on. They typically all have the four screws that hold the outer housing on. Um, a lot of the newer ones, because this particular heater is actually close to 30 years old, a lot of your newer heaters, uh, this entire center piece on the back is actually completely round. But you'll find as you take it apart, it's still the exact same way. Again, just checking the fan, make sure it's spinning. I'm going to go ahead and give this one final little tweak. Two, three, four. And now I'm going to go ahead and set the top back on. There's a total of eight screws I'm going to be putting in on that. And then we're going to try and fire it up. Now, hopefully, if I did everything right, and yes, I am uh, I forgot to order a filter, so I don't have the filter to put back into that, but if I did everything right, I'm going to plug her in. Uh, it should take it a second or two, and it should fire up, so let's see what happens.
a second or two because it had to prime up. Because uh, obviously with me having it all pulled apart, it didn't have any fuel in it. But it's probably still working to try and prime itself. Because it's burning, but it's not burning really well. But either way, at least it's starting to work. Anyway, as you can see, it finally smoothed itself out. Burning nice and cherry hot, nice and smooth like it should. Uh, what I ended up having to do is this vacuum line, if you open up the lid, I'm sorry, I should have shown it. Uh, it attaches to the nozzle here and it attaches to your mix, fuel mixture line over here. Uh, it had a slight blockage in it. I pulled it apart, cleaned it, and now she's running great. So, uh, anyway, that is how you troubleshoot and fix a torpedo heater. This is a Remington 100. Uh, I do want to point out that most of the turbo heaters, or torpedo heaters is what I call them, uh, are basically just like this. You'll see different aspects of the way that their insides are and the aspect of how they're shaped, but they all come apart the same way. They all have the same fuel pump. Uh, they all operate the same way. So this particular video does apply to any and all torpedo heaters and I hope this helps with anybody that's trying to troubleshoot their torpedo heater. Uh, so as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Builds. I hope this helps. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below. And also don't forget, I will be putting links in the description of this video below for where you can get the parts for uh, this particular heater and also other heaters as well. So as always, we'll see you next time on Bevan's Builds.